So for those of you who don't know, my name is Agnes, and I'm here today to talk to you about the potential dangers that have been caused by high levels of radiation that have been found in our seafood consumption. And I noticed a lot of people did this, but let's see a raise of hands of who likes seafood. All right, so that's a pretty decent amount of you, and I'm not surprised. Um, I'm going to talk about this particular topic into three different tiers. I'm going to first talk about what has happened and what's caused the different radiation levels. And then I'm going to tell you why this is an important matter, why this isn't a problem just a matter for me or you or for anyone else in this room, but why we should all be paying attention to the problem. And last but not least, the kind of so, to, so, so what aspect, you know, the call to action that everyone wants to hear about, essentially. Most of you may have heard about the Fukushima incident that happened a couple years back in 2011. Um, as you see on the board, it happened in March 11, 2011, and it was caused by a 9.0 magnitude earthquake that, it, that in effect um, also caused a 30 feet tsunami, and then later on caused um, a disruption in the different like explosions of the different nuclear power plants that was in Fukushima. I personally lived through natural disaster um, situations. I was living in Thailand, lived, lived through the flooding, lived through the tsunami. I know what it feels like to be kind of trapped in that sense. But we were able to speak up about our kind of um, our, our threats and the different kinds of concerns that we have. But these um, sea creatures that have been affected through the radiation cannot speak up for themselves, obviously. So this is why I feel the um, problem is important. So. Um, in addition to that, why is this problem important to all of us? Um, I was kind of hes hesitant to talk about this topic because some of you may not like seafood, some of you may be vegetarians, but essentially we all live in Washington and live next to the beautiful Pacific Ocean. And, um, you know, I've learned that paying attention to one environment more than the other kind of is unfair because it essentially makes the environment unbalanced because we don't want to be just specifically on what interests us. I mean, we live in a beautiful environment, so we should really look at the bigger picture. So, I'm going to read this. Absolutely everyone, 15 out of 15 blue food tuna um, tested in California coasts have been contaminated with Fukushima radiation. Now, that's 15 out of 15. That's 100%. The ratio, the ratio has been downsized for us to kind of easily understand that, you know, every single tuna. Um, bluefin tuna that has been found in the coasts of California are actually detected with high levels of radiation. And the next slide is a little bit graphic, so yeah, that's what's happening right now. Um, these tuna fish have been found with high levels of polonium, cesium, 143, 147, 138. And you know, I'm not a science expert, so I'm not really familiar with these little um, numbers and ingredients, I guess. But I looked into cesium, and cesium is actually found in erosions of rocks and soils, and we definitely don't want that in our stomachs or in the oceans. So, oh, yeah, by the way, I love crab pot and I love seafood. I love getting that fresh um, dish of crabs, shrimps, fish, you name it. And I love sushi. So I thought for about a second, and I thought, what could be an effective measure and a realistic measure to this problem? And I'm assuming that most, or if all of you may have some kind of a technological device that you own. And so I thought about it for a second, and found this beautiful, um, and thanks to Lauren as well. Um, this app, a mobile app that could also be downloaded on iPads or computers, is actually a very um, unique app that helps detect the different kind of radiation, radiation levels found in your fish consumptions, and it also helps recommend restaurants that are more safe to go to. Um, so, take a moment and close your eyes for a second. Think about all the different kinds of concepts we thought about over the quarter. Corbett mentions that there are a lot of different environmental ideologies that we can um, relate to more than the others. This is because we live and come from different backgrounds and cultures. Some of you may be more interested in saving the environment, some of you may not. But what I'm trying to say is that it's important that we look at the bigger picture and focus not just on one or two, not just focus on what I like and dislike, but look at the bigger picture. You may now open your eyes. So what I'm just saying in brief is that be conscious. 
take control and be aware of the different kinds of choices you're making in your environmental activities. You want to make sure you know what you're consuming or you know what you, and what you're purchasing. So it's really important that you take control of your um, environmental choices because in the end, we are living in this special environment and we want to be able to preserve it for our future generations. Thank you.